Hey, good afternoon, everybody. This is the Two Old Farts. Um, apologies for not doing our regularly scheduled podcast on Sunday at our normal time. Uh, we had some not so good news from our recent um, guest, my uncle Bobby, my dad's uh, brother-in-law. So, take it away, Dad. Well, Uncle Bobby, you know he was over for Father's Day, and we had a great Father's Day. You know, he was there and we're talking. You, you know, Uncle Bobby, he's he's just a real well. Your whole that whole family can really get conversations going, and, and it's just stuff like that. And then, Very charismatic. And then Tuesday, you know, we had the podcast, and he looked really good. And I went back and looked at that podcast, and I want to tell you, I was impressed. You know, with the knowledge and, and all those kind of things, and then I got a call Thursday. Uncle Bobby's not doing too good. He was in the hospital. Well, on the way, or actually, that was Friday when I got the call. He started feeling weak and and not good Thursday. Okay. Friday evening, he started throwing up blood. Oh man! When I say throwing up blood, when the reader was talking about a lot of blood. And uh, he couldn't hardly breathe or anything like that, so they called 911. And I, I got to give a shout out to those people based on what Rita was telling me. The lady who stayed on the phone sent two ambulances out there. There was a total wow. of about 10 people that showed up. And Holy she smokes. said, roll him on the side because he couldn't breathe, you know, and, and do a couple of things like that. And she stayed on the phone with Rita until those people got there. They, and she told him, she said, Make sure you got plenty of room because these people are going to come in. And uh, so they came in and uh, got him out. And they, on the way to the hospital and during that process, they gave him three pints of blood. Didn't know wow. they carried blood on those ambulances. Okay. I didn't either. But what they were telling Rita over a period of time here, here kind of recently, I'm not sure what that recent means, but they found out that it saves more lives when they have some, uh, you know, some blood on the ambulance with them so they can go ahead and, and start that process before they get to a hospital because sometimes it may take you, uh, you know, a few minutes, uh, a little while to get there. So he was in pretty bad shape and they're working on him. And then uh, Rita was telling me he threw a, I, I just, I can't describe how much blood. It would be just like a big spot spots so I guess she was he wasn't feeling good she and he said um, I feel I'm kind of hungry and so you know Uncle Bobby he, he he likes different things he's not a black eyed pea type guy like me and uh, mm-hmm. he said no that don't sound good she said something else and finally he said okay that sounds good took a bite and uh he said it tastes like sawdust. Then all of a sudden, he started just throwing up blood everywhere, you know, and stuff like that. Uh, so they rushed him to the hospital. They uh, had to uh, incubate him. Intubate him? Yeah. Where they yes. put the tube down their throat? Well, that and they, where they control your your breathing and everything. You're not, you're not, breathing. they're controlling everything, okay? When they incubate, it's kind of like, a baby when they incubate incubate a baby or anybody that's and they can control it for days, months, however long they want to control it. So they did that and they had that tube down his throat, stuff like that. So and his blood pressure was really, really low and stuff. So anyway, when I went by to see him, he was out of it. He had just actually come out of that incubation period and, and he was just Sleeping, you know, because they they do it very slowly. I didn't I didn't know that they had to. Period of so time. they had him in an induced coma. And they took him. Hmm? Did they have him in an induced induced coma? Induced coma? Is that what? You yes. Did? So that was uh, on Friday. Yeah, and uh, they took him to University Hospital when uh, the ambulance got that's there. The same, that's the same hospital they took you to when you had that really bad car accident a few years ago. Right. And the, the, uh, they told him they wanted to take him to the VA hospital, you know, and, uh, they said, no, people in his condition, who we don't know, we take him to a trauma center where those people can 
they know what they're doing and they can handle, they have all the equipment and those guys. So that's where they right. took him. And he's still in, on, in the ICU. But, uh, when I went by Friday, uh, uh, his skin color, but Chuck, his hands, his fingers were swollen so tight. I'm a, they're big around as the top of this top on this, or maybe even, you know, and just, Did they I say just, why his skin was so swollen, his limbs? Just so swollen. But his feet wasn't swollen. And t- usually his feet, you know, he'll be swell on the legs and, and, and the stomach, so like that. But he was still like that. Then yesterday they ran some tests, but they couldn't do all the tests because he still had a little bit of blood in his in his lungs and, and different parts of the body, so they couldn't get a, a good test. Long story short, this morning when I was there, a doctor came in, and this doctor was his first day to come in, and he's a specialist. So, so I asked him, I said, what do you think caused all this? He's, he said, and they, they're not sure because they haven't finished all the t- diagnosis yet. And so all the tests they did yesterday, they haven't got the results back yet because they had to do the blood and stuff like that. Cirrhosis of the liver. All of that? Said, I said, he doesn't drink. He hasn't drank in years. He said, that's a misconception. When He says, most people, when you say cirrhosis, that's the first thing they think of is drinking. But right. what it boils down to is lifestyle, how you eat, and a lot of, just a lot of different components to that process. He said, what happens is the liver makes uh, platelets and, uh, and, and stuff like that, or I forgot what they call it now, uh, for the body. And, right. it, and what happens is a protein makes proteins for the, for the body. And those proteins go through the blood systems and all those kind of things. And what happens is sometimes those proteins overwork or they get clogged. And that is, in his opinion is what caused the ble- the bleeding. I don't think at first they thought maybe hemorrhoids or not hemorrhoids, but also an ulcerated right. stomach or something like that. And, and this still may be, but they don't think so. But they think this particular doctor, and that's his specialty, is he thinks it was caused by, by the cirrhosis of the liver. And then come to find out, he had been diagnosed, diagnosed a long time ago with partial cirrhosis of the liver. And that's what I was just talking about a minute ago. We were talking and then yeah. said, tell people stuff. He hadn't told anybody. It just came out when him and Reader was talking and, and through this process just a little bit, uh, or just before this, that that he had said something he'd been diagnosed with cirrhosis of liver a long time ago and stuff like that. Because you know, cause, you know, Bobby, he rides his, uh, those dirt bikes. I mean, he goes 10, 15, 20 miles at a time type thing. Yeah, he's so, yeah, been a long-time mountain biker. They finally, last night, they pulled out the, uh, what do you call that tube where they put down your throat and stuff like that. And uh, they had him uh, on just oxygen with that, you know, tube in your, your nose and stuff like that. When I got there this morning, he was he was sleeping. And of course, I didn't bother, I just let him sleep. And he was just kind of like in and out. Then when the doctor came in, we're talking. A little while later, one of the nurses came in and he's really, thirsty really you know one or something he's starting to get hungry and thirsty and when the nurse checked him, he had a lot of uh swelling or a bruising in his his throat you know stuff like and I'm, that's from the i guess that ventilator been down you know the down and stuff like that so anyway she brought him some little ice cubes so he started uh just on the ice cubes and stuff like that and then later on he was telling her that he he was hungry. She said, well, we're going to start you out just slowly and we'll maybe get you on a liquid diet later today or something like this. Then the, one of the nurses came up from the dietitians uh-huh. and uh, <laughs> you know, Uncle Bobby, he, he can talk to anybody and get anybody on his side, right? So he's talking to her. But this is like 9, 30, 10 o'clock this morning. He was starting to feel a lot better. And of course, Cassie had come back by that time, and, and we're talking, telling stories, and he's starting to feel a lot better. Uh, 
the swelling had gone down. Still had a little bit of swelling and stuff like that. So she <laughs> she had some little. It looked like banana pudding. I don't know what was in that cup, but she wanted to. She was doing tests to see how well he could tolerate swallowing and all that kind of stuff. So she pulled out one out of that little thing she has on it, has pockets on it, right? And so he said, you got that a lot of pockets? If you do, you can leave some for me and some for my brother-in-law. <laughs> she said, no. So anyway, she went through all that kind of stuff, and, and he tolerated the procedures really well. And then she's the one that actually got him on the ice and stuff like that. Then a little bit later on, they came in and I gave him some water and stuff like that to see how well he would tolerate swallowing. You know, those kind of things. So, but when I left, probably around 11, 11 30, something like that, they had brought in some type of liquid. I, I'm not sure what it's in a big cup with a straw where he could uh-huh. start getting on there, but he was in really good spirits and, uh, and was talking and, and stuff like that. So it, it was touch and go there for a while. I wasn't sure what was going to happen, but uh, his skin color and everything was really good. And, uh, and they had so much fluids going into him and uh, that uh, he was, you know, peeing out a lot of fluids and stuff like that. So, but he, he was, when I left, he's doing pretty good. Uh, so your mom and I and Uncle Leonard, Uncle Leonard's coming down tomorrow. Uh, he was going to come today, but Terry had some type of uh, medical procedure she had to, had to, had to do. And, uh, so he's coming down tomorrow, and then all three of us are going to go back and, and visit with him tomorrow. He's still in ICU, and the doctor told that, that one doctor I was telling about, uh-huh. said they're going to keep him in ICU until his blood pressure stabilizes. His blood pressure is just fluctuating real low. Uh, I said, so once they get that up and get it stabilized, where it's pretty stable, then they'll move him to another room in the, in the hospital. So they don't know how long he's going to be there. And, and stuff like that. So, and we kind of laughed about the podcast. He said, "Turn the camera on. He's ready." <laughs> All right, we might just do that. <laughs> oh, so, do it at the hospital? Yeah. Okay. We, we can go up there. You can bring your phone, you know, and uh, we can sit by the bed. And, you know, they, they let two people in the room at a time. He'd like that. Where is University Hospital? So from from Lackland. Hmm. I'm trying to look on the map real quick to see where it is. University Hospitals uh, right across from the VA uh, for Otter Murphy. Let me do a quick thing. Uh, uh, Lackland. I went in. I I went down Minton. I turned down uh, Minton, uh, Merton Minton, uh, Minton Merton. Minton Merton. Yeah, and then they have a visit. That's uh, sorry. Hospital is huge, so I, went, I just put it into that parking lot, and you know, I think it cost me like two bucks to park and stuff like that. And then he's up on the fifth floor. He's if you went in, if you went into the front where the emergency room is, you, you just elevate and you go to the fifth floor, and uh, he's in the room. So I'll find out tomorrow more about how he's doing. Maybe when he gets to feel a little better, gets down into a, into his room. Uh, okay. Anything we can do to cheer him up, but I, I, I got to give a shout out because there's a lot of nice people out here in this world and we just don't hear about them. But every single nurse and doctor, and this is not just what I'm saying, Cassie, Aubrey, Rita, Pat, uh, Rita's sister, and Tina uh, were there when I got there uh, Sunday night, you know, but how nice you are, Reader. Talking about the nine one one operator, how she stayed on the phone and telling him her to turn him and do certain things with him, like that and stuff like that. Uh, so, and those ambulance drivers, was, she said, it was real good. They were working really hard to. Yeah, you, you bring know, up some really good points. Stabilize, and keep them alive, and stuff. And, you know, yeah, my my first concern. When I heard that spitting up blood was your Uncle Ray, you know yeah. Uncle Ray. That's how he 
That's how he died. Uh, something happened. He was spitting up blood, and he, he choked. Uh, uh, and, and, and when those things happen, you don't have any control, and those things can easily happen. I, probably why she told Reader to turn him on his side. Right. Yeah. So that's that's kind of where yeah, we're yeah. at. And, and yeah, course, you bring up some good points. You. You touched on some good points. Um, it's important to let people know, those especially close to you, about your health, your health conditions, things that you've been diagnosed with. That, you know, but your doctor tells you, don't just keep it to yourself. Um, if something serious is going on, you know, you need to let somebody know, right? Absolutely. So, yeah, it, and it kind of works both ways too. You can't you can't lecture somebody on that, but you got to. So I need to let you know, but you can't lecture me all the time about it. You know what I mean? But I do need to lecture you because I I like <laughs> having you around. You know, you're going to be eighty in a couple of months, and so, I'd like to get a few I more years that. out of you. He is he's one heck of a, a person, and the whole family. Uh, we're blessed. Not only do I have four brothers, you got four uncles, in addition to your uncle Ray and your uncle Gene, and you know. So, uh, so take care of yourself, people. Yes, we 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 want yeah. to keep you around. We we like you guys downloading you guys from around the world, uh, Poland, UK, Philippines, Australia, England, Canada coast to coast here in the states can you believe we've had a download from every state except one which one west virginia oh wow i, I wonder if they've even got internet out there well, that, that's, can, that, can you that's somebody, amazing alaska hawaii in the last couple of days and somebody i wouldn't expect but she was listening to our podcast and said so she liked it oh when i went to the oh. dentist last tuesday yeah uh, i think i may have told you but she likes the podcast, and she's telling her friends and stuff like that. And then when I was telling one of the nurses today up there about our podcast, she said, okay, I'm going to check it out. Okay. So. Well, thank you for the wrap-up. We're going to keep this short this time. Uh, so thank you. You got any parting words of wisdom for, for the audience? No, I just – Stay focused on what you're doing, and I agree with it. You have to let people know if you have some issues and stuff like that because people do love us even though we don't think so sometimes. Or sometimes, you know, I know your mom sometimes will, you don't tell me, because when I get out in the, in the yard cutting grass and all that kind of, I just, I forget about all the problems in the world, and I think about all the good members. I think about the concerts that you and I go to. and. Uh, things that you and Tina used to do when y'all were growing up and stuff like that. But I also know that sometimes I have to really watch it. But I think right now I have a pretty good idea of when to quit. and But I still need to be reminded sometimes. Yes, you do. All right, everybody. Thank you. Uh, sorry for not doing it on Sunday, but we had some family stuff going on. Uh, we will try to get it on Sunday, barring, you know, any emergencies or whatever. So thank you, guys. We look forward to uh, seeing and hearing from you. We're on the socials. You know, hit like, subscribe, and, you know, give us some feedback. Absolutely. We'd love to hear from you. All right, everybody. Y'all take right. care. We'll talk to you later, and I'll uh, keep you updated on Uncle Bobby. All right. Love you. I love you too. Bye, guys. Right. Bye.